Syrian army seizes Al Daba's airport north of Qasir. So they seize an impor uh, important airport in this border town. It says Ham's province remains a strategic gain for either side because of its location, which connects the capital Damascus to the Mediterranean coast. They've also taken control of this Ham's Baldock Highway. Syrian uh, TV reporter has been killed in Qasir. It says here that they were killed by, uh, or she was killed by a sniper close to the airport. So, uh, you know, if it's a sniper, it means that they knew exactly who she was, that she was a reporter. Um, but it should come to no surprise if you've um, seen some of these GGM reports uh, in the past because we've talked about um, these reporters being abducted and kidnapped uh, by these, uh, quote, opposition. And, of course, the Turkish military or government is involved in this um, trafficking or kidnapping scheme uh, basically for bribes and for money. So... U.S. Senator meets with militants in Syria. So it says here, U.S. Senator John McCain visited Syria and America's officials' efforts to beef up their military aid to the terrorists. There was no details about the trip. It was the first visit by an American official since Ambassador to Syria Robert Ford visited earlier this month. What we want from the U.S. government is to take decision to support the Syrian revolution with weapons, ammunition, anti-tank missiles, and anti-aircraft missiles. William Haig says the UK ready to go it alone on arming terrorists in Syria. Speaking in Brussels ahead of a meeting of EU foreign ministers where he did his best to persuade his counterparts of the need to lift restrictions on the supply of weapons to the terrorists in Syria. EU ends arms embargo on Syrian rebels but no immediate plans to send arms. So he said today after the decision it sends a very strong message from Europe to the Assad regime. This article, BND, uh, intelligence chief to conduct secret talks in Damascus. Um, if anyone knows how to speak German, if you can write in the comment board what exactly this article is indicating. Um, was the German intelligence meeting with uh, the Islamists, with the opposition, or were they meeting with the Syrian government? Um, it's a real bad translation. Uh, but remember, uh, uh, BND, they had just noticed recently about the increasing strengthening of the Syrian army, saying Assad troops um, have a functional supply lines for weapons and fuel. So he says they also said that they may recover the whole south in the current year. 200 French nationals joined Syrian militants, says Lamont. The new report says around 200 French nationals have traveled to Syria in the past year to join the foreign-backed uh, militants or terrorists fighting to topple the Assad regime. Then we got this uh, chemical attack narrative being played out again. Of course, uh, France is at the head of it along um, with the UK. French paper reports chemical attacks in Syria. They describe chemical attacks in gritty detail. So it says here, when Obama spoke last week about the use of chemical weapons in Syria, he wanted, or he said he wanted to avoid rushing to judgment because we don't know how they were used, when they were used, or who used them. So it's uh, detailing a uh, French newspaper who spent two months with the rebels in Damascus where they report witnessing multiple chemical attacks firsthand and spoke to medical centers all over the region treating people and the effects of gas attacks. So. Apparently, they're going to agree with uh, agree with um, one side over the other, um, especially when one side is uh, basically what they can't even agree on anything. They're just foreign jihadists who cut people's hearts out, and uh, and uh, they they they're carrying out uh, rapes. They're carrying out uh, all kinds of horrible stuff, blowing up civilians in their schools, targeting them, targeting journalists. And the same media ignores uh, the mass um, mass executions that happened twice uh, by these rebels. Uh, they also ignored the um, the uh, it was a chemical attack, but it wasn't a WMD. It was a chlorine agent um, that that the rebels had actually um, showed on YouTube, killing rabbits. So uh, you know, it's I think we pretty much know who carried it out. I guess they believe if they repeat the lie enough that people will believe it or, you know, whatever. It's uh, I know that's blamed on Hitler and the Nazis, but it's a, it's a Jewish tactic to just keep the big lie going. Don't ever back down. This is my website, globalgovernmentnewsggnonline.com. I have a poll up here prior to the devastating tornado. Did you receive a more significant level of aerial aerosol spraying? U.S. Uh, residents only. Uh, so far, 54% said yes, followed by 18% saying no, and 27% saying not sure. Um, I have a news archive. Also, if you'd like to help me out, it'd be truly appreciated um, with donations and PayPal. So 
Uh, it's usually through this website that you can do it. Um, thanks to those who have. Uh, Jordan Israel working as one over Syria says a report. Jordan has allowed the Israeli regime to fly its drones over the Jordanian airspace in order to monitor the situation in Syria. The official, whose name was not mentioned in the report, stated that Jordan would of course allow Israel to use Jordanian airspace for another attack on Syria uh, if the need arose. May 5th, Syria said the Israeli regime had carried out an airstrike targeting a research center in the suburb of Damascus following heavy losses afflicted upon the Al-Qaeda-affiliated groups. Jordan to host major 18-nation military drill. They plan to host a drill up Eager Lion 2013 with the participation of more than 15,000 soldiers from 18 different countries, including the U.S. So they've actually done this before. Some of the other countries are Britain, Bahrain, Canada, the Czech Republic, Egypt, France, Iraq, Italy, Lebanon, Pakistan, Poland, Qatar, Turkey, uh, the UAE, and Saudi Arabia, and Yemen. So they call them friendly countries. Jordan seeks to deploy Patriot missiles on its Syrian uh, borders. Jordan, which shares borders with the war-torn Syria, said on Sunday it is in talks with friendly countries to deploy Patriot missiles on its territory after a similar move by Turkey. Next up, we have Iran claims to field massive number of missile launchers. This, of course, is ahead of the elections, which are coming up in, what, about two weeks? To a little over two weeks? It says the components delivered to Iranian military units would allow them to crush the enemy with mass simultaneous fire of long-range surface-to-surface missiles. Rocket fire from southern Lebanon hits north of occupied Palestine. Media sources confirmed that a missile was launched from the Lebanese town of Marahoun towards the occupied northern territories of Palestine. Lebanese high-ranking military official denied the attack, saying no, rock was uh, yeah, no rocket was fired on Israel. So this uh, rocket uh, apparently um, set off all kinds of alerts and alarm systems and, and whatnot, air raids. Israel's serious strike or strikes done with eye on broad regional war. Officials envision enormous war encompassing Iran, Syria, and Lebanon. And this is in the mainstream media as well, uh, from Reuters. When Israel hit, when Israel hit Syria, they already did. Uh, I guess they're saying when they do it the next time, it hones military edge for a wider war. When Israeli jets bomb Syria to deny it or its allies game-changer weapons. They play according to one core rule, ensuring the Jewish state maintains the military superiority to swiftly prevail in any war. So, it says here, though, they, uh, they officially won't even acknowledge that the strikes took place. Recent Israeli attacks on Syria have been done with uh, hushed tones around the prospect of Hezbollah acquiring hugely powerful offensive weapons from the Assad government's arsenal. The reality is much different, however, reports that the targeted weapons supposedly earmarked for Hezbollah where anti-aircraft and defensive weapons don't make sense in the context of Israel's official statements on the matter, yet analysts say that the defensive weapons very much are the target and it stems from Israel's constant expectations of an imminent uh, region-wide war. Well, I guess if you're, uh, if you're kind of behind the, the sowing of the seeds of it through your little proxy Zionist occupied governments, then you would know. You would know, right? You would have a little inside uh, inf information on that. They say the reality is the Israeli military <clears throat> has been training for uh, a multi-front uh, war with Hezbollah, the Assad government, Syria, and Iran all at the same time. It is in this context that Israel is constantly taking up its military superiority uh, needs and expecting the U.S. to pony up aid to maintain. Israel, a Hezbollah armed with anti-ship weapons, means Israel can't part its navy off the Lebanese coast. That's what they were talking about up, up above, is that um, uh, they're going to be pushed into the sea, says uh, mostly by Shiites, just shell away at their cities with impunity. And Hezbollah, with the decent anti-aircraft weapons, means Israel can't constantly have warplanes violating Lebanese airspace, uh, which they do even in peacetime. So you can go in there and check it out. But uh, this is what I was talking about. Uh, you know, talking about uh, the Sheikh Imran and Hossein saying that um, they got to have the uh, the appearance that all the world of, of, of Islam is rising up, and that uh, Israel. And this is of course plays into Israel's hands. They use uh, a lot of white nations or country, whatever's left. I don't know if there actually exists anymore. But um, you know, say the UK and uh, and France and the United States and Canada um, to do this uh, to, to carry out their. Uh, carry out their war for them, or at least aid them. And I think that's what uh, these attacks on the uh, UK soldier, uh, 
uh, the British soldier and um, and, and France. I think that's what a lot of this is is about. I think I think there may be a divide, and no, I, you know, it's like, do I can I show you proof? No, I just from all the op observation, and I'm could be wrong. I probably am, but I almost wonder if there's a split between the whole. You know, there's always going to be the the, uh, the Christian Zionists. They don't know that they're Zionists doing their their work for them, but there's always this kind of like assumption that if you're Christian, you're going to be along the side with um, uh, with Jews. But uh, but I almost wonder if there's a break in that uh, between the, the, the kind of the Judeo Christian alliance, at least from the top, because you still have the people at the bottom. Uh, they don't really know what's going on. They're just steered a certain way. But I wonder if there's a break, uh, and I wonder if Israel is just going to try to go it alone here. These recent stabbing attacks are, you know, it's it's one of their operations. Because there's a lot of people that are talking about immigration and multiculturalism, which is true. Um, but they get their EDL out there, and they get all of these, uh, you know, neocons out there uh, talking about, you know, uh, ravaging, you know, on about uh, Islamophobia. So they're playing into the whole card that, that they want them to play. Israeli bill would eval uh, elevate Judaism above democracy. So an Israeli MP has submitted a controversial proposal to the legislator that would grant a Jewish identity priority over democracy and rulings, which pertains to issues of re uh, religion and state, also requiring Jewish communities be set up in disputed areas. The land of Israel is a historical birthplace of the Jewish people and the place of the establishment of the state of Israel. So people in opposition said uh, basically that when David Ben-Gurion founded this country, it was one of the basis of two principles. Israel was to be a Jewish and democratic state. Now they are trying to annex Judea and Samaria and erode the democratic state so that it can impact future court decisions surrounding Israeli presence in Judea and Samaria. This is a key contentious issue uh, with the ongoing Israeli-Palestinian conflict. So it's about expansion, right? Israeli settlements in West Bank grow to 1,977 acres in 2012. They cover an area roughly equal to 1,035 football soccer stadiums and twice as big as New York Central Park were approved by military order. The UN and most of the countries regard the Israeli settlements as illegal because the territories were captured by Israel in the war of 1967. Israel supplies Gaza hospitals with killer gas. Palestinian sources say the Israeli regime has supplied Gaza hospitals with a potentially killer gas uh, to be used for anesthetic purposes. So it says here the supplier of the nitrous oxide gas to Gaza hospitals gave them carbon dioxide gas opposing as nitrous. Kurdish students in Iraq push for relations with Israel. Like I said before, if Kurdistan ever gets their own uh, autonomous state, it will be a Zionist proxy state. In University of Kurdistan, Kurdistan students debate whether the two forge diplomatic ties with Israel. They focus on historical connection between Jews and Kurds, believe they can have a fruitful tie or ties, so they're friendly countries, I guess. Orzai of Egypt's Salafist advisor, we have no problem with the peace with Israel, so relations with Israel should proceed as normal, only with more Egyptian soldiers in the Sinai. So, you know, they're going to, there's a good chance that they're going to aid Israel, and uh, so at, during the time of the Arab Spring, they were all scared, ooh, Israel, ooh, we got the uh, Harlem Islamists, you know, the Muslim Brotherhood and all that. Again, these are all proxies. Chechnya building mosque by Jerusalem for brethren lost 500 years ago. The country's putting millions of dollars into building a huge mosque in Abu Ghash, uh, whose residents trace their ancestry to the Caucasian region. It says, through the meditation or mediation of a Chechnyan-born Jew, the villagers established ties with the Chechnyan government, which agreed to contribute more than $2 million to build the mosque. The Chechnyan government has been looking for ways to enhance ties with Israel. Bahraini MP calls for Gulf Army, says they look forward to a unified Gulf Army as a prelude to the Gulf Union. Again, these are all um, these are all the Salafis or Sunnis. These are the pro these are the forces that are fighting on behalf of the West against you know you know Russia and Dagestan or uh, in the Middle East and Syria. U.S. will remain in Afghanistan for a long time. Fight the 2014 uh, withdrawal. U.K. gas supply 
six hours from running out in March. It almost ran out of gas. A new Eastern Med alliance, the recent Greek-Israeli-Cypriot-Israeli partnerships have shown the three countries can cooperate and maintain stability in the Eastern Mediterranean. U.S. keen to see Trans-Caspian gas pipeline to be implemented to Turkmenistan gas field to start production. Opening a new U.S.-backed supply routes to Europe and Asia at the risk of Russian opposition. And thousands of Romanians are protesting against Chevron's hydraulic fracking for gas. Thank you.